Okay, hello everybody. This is LaQueen Battle of Battle First Aid Responder Services here in Boston, Massachusetts at the Copley Library. I want to go ahead and just make this a quick video today. As you guys know, I am, um, I am a first aid responder for the city of Boston as well as a adult pediatric first aid community health and also an activist here in the community for COVID-19 research and community health. So that's what I do. Um, I have a bachelor's degree and Spanish associate's degree in Spanish and also I'm a certified medical assistant. I want to talk about what Sarah Jakes Roberts just posted on YouTube. Uh, today it is, it is Wednesday, August the 25th. The time right now is 4.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the United States of America. Sarah Jakes just had a YouTube video saying, teaching your children how to communicate. Uh, Sarah Jakes Roberts and a delegation guest on her YouTube channel, Sarah Jakes Roberts, which has approximately about four, 470,000 subscribers on her YouTube channel. So pretty much what I want to talk about, she just posted an anonymous video about teaching your children how to communicate. Um, as you know, right now we are going through a transition. Um, the uh, We're going from COVID-19 transition where a lot of children are doing in at home virtual learning and versus um, a lot of schools students are going back now to in-person classroom learning and so as a minister of God her focus should be on improving the church of God as well as teaching children how to grow in their relationships with their parents as well as in the community as a whole especially with a lot of families who really do not understand how the COVID pandemic has impacted them as well as how it has changed them and their loved ones. So that should be her focus as a pastor, minister, and a woman of God. But unfortunately, she had a folk, a guest on her on her talk show today, which is great. Um, I'm just going to pretty much, uh, again, this is uh, attributed to... Um, I'm gonna have you guys listen on this. Uh, teaching your children how to communicate. She had a guest here today on delegation. Pulling out of your children by allowing them to feel safe. That's all the feeling. Okay, so pretty much what she was talking about was pulling, pulling it out of your children and allowing them to feel safe. Now, as you know, the COVID pandemic has put a lot of fear on children as well as them not understanding how to deal with the emotions of am I scared how does it affect my health what, what am my mommy going to do are we going to have a job are we going to stay in school are we going to how we will be able to support ourselves and a lot of families are losing their home and housing as well as just pretty much the economy is going through a lot of struggles right now there's a lot of fear around uh, the Afghanistan the Afghanistan humanitarian crisis situation is scaring a lot of people especially a lot of young families who do not know if we're going to go through another terroristic attack or if there's going to be another 9-11 it's putting a lot of fear on people's homes so that's true that's kind of I think that's kind of the statement that she was making a lot of people have a lot of fear and they really do not understand what is going on looking at your child and letting them be seen and creating a space where they can talk yeah and, and just so she said of course allowing your children to be seen and allowing them to talk and i think that's great great for your children to be seen as you know the bible verse says that children should be seen and not heard well of course that is a great great definition of what it means to be a child but not necessarily you always want that child to be exposed to new experiences as well as to have their own opinion as well as for that child to know that they matter to know that their lives matter and especially when you are dealing with a lot of abusive situations really you try to hide the pain and hide the fear and hide the child away from the abuse instead of letting that abuse be exposed and you really don't want to hide abuse you want to expose the abuse so the situation can change so i really don't agree with that situation that particular statement making sure like they feel safe in what they're about to say that and of course during this pandemic especially dealing with the uh terrorism attacks as well as with 9-11 and a lot of veterans are coming back home uh, right now president biden has is trying to, to let now more than 10,000 americans are still more than that are still in Af in the country of afghanistan and right now a lot of children are scared and emotional because they don't know uh, how the war is going on we're going to have another war they're afraid they're 
they're pretty much used to that in, at home environment where they have their family, they have their loved ones, their mother and father around them to protect them. And now dealing with COVID, dealing with Afghanistan, dealing with um, the pandemic and dealing with now being exposed to a new in-person environment, it leaves kind of a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear with a lot of AIDS, a young AIDS school children. So I don't necessarily agree with that statement either. They don't, but you know, with what they're about, that they don't think that they're going to get in trouble. You know, that it's okay to have those feelings. It's okay. It's okay to talk about it because mommy feels the same way. Mommy's sad too. Mom, we're figuring this thing out together. And exactly, a lot of parents are pretty much going through that same situation where they're trying to figure out, like, how do we deal with this pandemic? And how does mom and dad look for a job? How do we take care of this housing crisis, which a lot of parents are dealing with back, back due bills, we're dealing with lost income, we're dealing with a health crisis, as well as dealing with what's going on on TV. Of course, it's Afghanistan. So it's great to talk, have an emotional talk together with families, children and parents, and let that child be exposed to the situation, let them know what exactly is going on, have a face-to-face -face conversation with the whole entire family network, family link of friends to figure out what is going on and how can you best relate to the situation. So that they don't think that they're the only ones, that the only one that has those feelings. That, that is so good, too, because I feel like even with adulthood, like when we talk about like healing our childhood traumas and childhood wounds, like the same way we talk to a child who's full of emotions, sometimes we have to talk to ourselves that way. So I, I kind of understand a little bit, but not really, because you have to understand dealing with the child is more than a child, that child set, that network, that link, that emotion, that that. A demeanor of a child. A child is more than just emotion. A child is um, is in an environment around them. A child is a spirit. A child is a person. Okay, a a regular a regular child is a person. They're full of life. They're full of energy. They're full of the mindset. Okay, so when you're dealing with a child, whether they're five years old or twelve years old or sixty years old, whoever they are, between ages of even as young as toddlers, as two to five years old, they have their own mind, their own mentality. And so, of course, you say, oh, that child has a lot of emotions, but not necessarily. A child can think for themselves, even as young as a baby. A baby can even think for themselves. So usually, most of the time, the parent's responsibility is to take care of their child, to nurture the, nurture the child, to provide the child, provide provision, health, wellness, housing, food, uh, protection, safety, security. So the parent's provision is to provide for the child at the same time, allowing that child to grow in as a person, to grow in as the ability that they are choosing to be so that that child can mature into their own personhood into their own personhood. So as you know, Sarah Jakes has churches in Los Angeles, which is, which is she has a church by my hometown, as well as she has a church in Fort Worth, uh, the Potter's House Fort Worth, that's also down the street from my own hometown too in Fort Worth, my birthplace. So I agree, I think that's a wonderful connection that I have with Sarah Jakes, but unfortunately, I really don't like that connection. <laughs> unfortunately, I don't like that connection. Um, there's other great, great cities that uh, the Potter's House Ministry could be uh, involved with in the black community. There's Atlanta, um, the, which you have the Megafest, and every year in North, there's Atlanta. Great, great for TV and media networks. There's New Orleans, which they go to Megafest every single year in New Orleans. There's Florida. Florida has an amazing, amazing Christian, uh, global Christian ministries in Florida. TBN, Paula White, uh, Rodney Howard Brown. There's mega, mega mi million dollar ministries in Florida, as well as in Chicago. Chicago has a great, great, great uh, church set work black community, as well as in New York. New York's great for black churches too as well. So unfortunately, I do have a little bit of disagreements between the Potter's House as well as with Sarah Jakes. But she is a minister. She is a millionaire. She's a woman of God. And she she's, has millions and millions of subscribers. So what can I do? I can offer my op opinion. I can offer my input. And then I can pretty much move on from there. But that's pretty much how my 
personal life separates from Sarah Jakes. Sarah Jakes is 33 years old. Queen Battle is 36 years old, okay? She's a minister. I am a community health advocate. But at the same time, though, I can still pretty much go in there and say, you know what? Sarah Jakes, she's one of the young, amazing young ministers of God. Help her to continue to grow in her ministry as well. But that's where I disagree with. As you know, I, and I have been doing uh, the psychology around the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of families right now are exposed to this fear amongst each other, deal, especially dealing with Afghanistan, the crisis that's going on in Afghanistan. Talking about the Taliban is giving the United States a deadline to withdraw all its American troops all those American forces, all the American citizens from the country of Afghanistan. The Taliban is giving President Biden, as well as the United States government, a deadline, okay, okay? The Taliban is giving the United States government a deadline to withdraw all forms of support, of American support, from the country of Afghanistan. That right now is, and there's daily, daily, hour by hour briefings by the White House, by Jim, P Jim Psaki, and the White House uh, staff, uh, White House staff, as well as uh, daily briefings by uh, officials and governments who as well uh, involved as well in every single ministry, so in every single state. But unfortunately, uh, Sarah Jakes, as was her father, Bishop T D Jakes, is not head of the Black Church. They're not head of the Southern Gospel Baptist Convention. Bishop T.D. Jakes is not president of the Southern Baptist, um, Baptist Believers Convention, which is headquartered in Memphis, Tennessee. He is not president of the, of the Southern Baptist Believers Convention. He is not. Neither is Kenneth Copeland. But still, but still, we can still listen and take heed into what they're saying. Now, you know Sarah Jakes has millions and millions of subscribers on YouTube, Instagram, as well as her father's mega church in the down south. That's great. We can still listen to their ministries. But as Christians, as believers in God, as believers in Christ, we can always, always, always listen to the words of a minister, but still take heed and abide by the words of God and how that applies to us in our personal life. Okay. Now, as you see, Sarah Jakes made a statement on social media. YouTube is a social media platform. She did not make the statement on television. She did not make the statement on a Christian television station, okay, which is TBN. She does have the avail availability to make her ministry, her ministry on TBN, which her father, Bishop T.D. Jakes, has had wonderful messages on TBN as well as Daystar. It will be a wonderful opportunity for Sarah Jakes to be on Daystar or to be on TV, TBN. But I don't know if she has reached that potential yet but she still is a young minister, so she has a lot to go. So as Christians in God, as Christians and believers in Christ, we have the, uh, have the discernment. God has given us discernment. He has given us the Holy Spirit in order to make our own decisions and to listen to the Holy Spirit and discerning what is truth and what is a falsehood. And unfortunately, it's up to you as a Christian to believe in what you see on TV what's going on in government, what's going overseas in Afghanistan, or what you choose to accept as a reality in your own personal life, okay? In your own personal livelihood, okay? So you can choose to believe in fear or you can choose to believe in faith, but God gives us the Holy Spirit as discernment to guide us in the right direction, to lead us towards the path of fulfillment, okay? So as you know, I just accepted a position today with... Um, with AmeriCorps, okay, AmeriCorps is a volunteer organization. That's great. And then Sarah Jakes just had a YouTube video talking about teaching children in which way they want to go. That's great. But she has not been talking about anything related to children in any of her YouTube videos. What a coincidence. Anyway, so what we can do as many as Christians in the Church of God, we can still have the Holy Spirit to listen to as discernment and to guide us in the right direction that we need to go, especially when you're dealing with young children, young children, even young children up to the up to the ages of even three to five years old are given a spirit of discernment. Okay, children even have their own intuition. Children even have their own mindset to believe, hey mom or dad, 
I don't like this. Children have opinions. They're not just full of emotions. They have opinions. They have their own mentality. They have their own livelihood. They can do whatever they want. They're a child, but it's still up to the parents to have provision for them, to protect them, to provide security, to buy food and shelter and safety. That is the job of a parent, okay? So it was a good, she also has uh, more of her video and her conversation on her uh, app. Um, it's called Evolve. That's great. That's great. But Sarah Jakes is not the only young black African American woman, female of the black church right now. There's other, other ministers out there. Okay. All right. So again, right now, a lot of young families are going through, um, right now, a lot of young families are going through crisis right now. The war, the humanitarian, um, uh, crisis which I call a humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. President Biden, as well as the military, the military and the United States government has to withdraw more than 10,000 to plus American citizens and any kind of American allies or any kind of supports from the country in Afghanistan within a given deadline by the Taliban, which has been a foreign enemy and a terrorist, terrorist organization for more than 20 to 40 years against the United States government since President George H.W. Bush was in office, okay? Since the Cold War. The Taliban is giving us a deadline. And right now, uh, Press Secretary Jen Psaki is giving, giving, um, giving daily televised briefings on what that means to American citizens on TV, on every single TV station, as well as on social media, okay? Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. She's letting America know that we are in a conflict right now with with issues. We're dealing with security overseas, okay? That is a security issue, okay, against, and it's putting a lot of fear against American families right now, especially going through COVID-19, the pandemic, loss of jobs, loss of income. People are losing their homes, okay? And on top of that, Schools are now being forced to reopen, are now going in the process of reopening to bring it back to a normal rate of flow, okay? We've already had more than 700 to 800,000 Americans die because of this COVID-19 pandemic, as well as new variants coming into motion, okay? Now, as a Christian believer in Christ, our focus should be increasing on the mind as well as the health of our bodies. God tells us that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's what God's word tells us. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Keep it well. Maintain your temple of the Holy Spirit. Maintain your temple spiritually as well as physically. Keep maintaining your spirit. That's what God's word tells us. We can choose to believe in a man or a woman of God or we could choose to believe in our government officials. Whatever is going on, God tells us to maintain your temple, okay? Your physical health, your mental health, and your emotional health. Whether you have fear in what's going on with the United States government against the Taliban, or whether you have fear against the COVID-19 pandemic and about vaccines and about people dying and about your own personal health and welfare, whatever it is, God tells you, Keep your temple maintained as well as to put your trust in him and he will provide promises for all things necessary. Okay, God tells you he will make a provision out of no way. He will make a way out of no way. At the same time though, okay, he says fear, okay, he says do not worry, trust in me. I will make all things possible. There's so many words in the Bible that tells us about fear, about faith, about the promises of God. That should be the focus of your ministry. That should be the focus. As well as you can talk to a child. You can say, hey son, hey daughter, hey sweetheart, what do you know about faith? What do you know about fear? Are you afraid right now? Are you worried right now? Children are very, very independent. You'll be surprised how much a three-year-old child can do, not just say, they can do with their abilities, what the abilities are of a three-year-old to five-year-old child. You'd be very surprised how intellectual young children and toddlers are. Very, very intellectual. At the same time, though, parents pr protect and they teach. You teach your children in the way that they grow. Bible verse says, 
so that when they grow older, they will not depart from your teachings. That's what God's word says. So that should be the focus of a minister, male or woman, male or female of God, male or woman of God, okay? You should have Bible verses talking in every single one of your speeches, okay? That should be the focus of a minister, male or woman of God. You should be quoting Bible verses in every, every single message that you give on social media are tele televised. You should be speaking Bible verses. If you're not speaking Bible verses, then someone's going to come in there and say, what is the authority that you would be have behind your ministry? And what word of God are were you talking about from your ministry? You should, be, you should be saying words of God and words of faith. If they're not words of God or words of faith, and the message is being spoken out of the minister's lips, then you as a Christian, as a believer in God, have the authority to challenge that and to put God's word on fear, to put God's word on faith of that minister. You as a Christian have the authority behind that. Not a little queen battle, but you as a Christian, as a believer in God, have the authority behind the words, whether they're words of faith or whether they're words of falsehood behind that minister. And sometimes whether you are in the faith or if you are out of the faith, you still have the authority to challenge the words, the words behind their minister if they are not the words of faith or if they are not the words of God. All right? So there should be words of faith from, the, from God's word being spoken out of the lips of that minister. If there are not the words of God being spoken out of the words of that minister or some kind of verse being spoken in that ministry, every single message they give, then as a Christian, as a believer in God, you have the right to, to say, we rebuke that spirit and we claim authority over the power of God of that ministry. All right, so this is a little queen battle. Bishop T.D. Jakes has had a wonderful ministry, wonderful ministry over 20, 30, 50 years. It is within the power of God that he has touched male, women, children, teens, young adults, ministers, presidents, uh, politicians, leaders, kings and queens throughout his whole entire ministry. Okay? But sometimes ministers can fall out of the faith or... They can take authority over what they want. They can do anything they want. Sometimes, though, politics or money gets in the way. Okay? But you, as a believer in God, still have the authority to challenge that, or you still have the authority to say, we don't believe in this. We will go by the words of our God, and we will still follow in the ministry of faith, in our own ministry of faith. You have the ability to create your own church. You have the ability to create your own support group. You have the ability to create your own mission behind what you see is not right in that person's ministry. And there have been people over the years that have left the ministry of Bishop TJ's and created their own ministry too as well, which is, which is what the purpose is behind of creating God's word, and creating God's ministry. He wants you to go out there and teach the gospel to all, all, all nations so that you can go out there and be fruitful and multiply. God's word wants you to be fruitful and multiply. If you are not being fruitful or productive in your life, then that is an issue that you need to go back to the word or you need to go back to the faith and say, what is wrong in my life that I am not being fruitful as well as what am, is being, being made? What in my life is stopping me from moving forward in my life? Which is what a lot of families have been dealing with, American families, young or old have been dealing with since the pandemic started okay you still have the authority and the faith to claim that say we believe in the authority of power of god as well as in journal common sense we can get through this we can still keep going on we can still keep believing in each other having faith claiming that we are still one family we are still one body we are still united whether war whether the good times or the bad, we are still one family. We believe in the power and the faith of God to get us through. Okay? All right. So every word that ministers speak, it should be the words of faith and the words of God. If it is not, you have the ability as a Christian to challenge that authority. 
Okay, so this is Queen Battle, Battle for Saving Responder Services here in downtown Boston, Massachusetts. I love you guys talking today about Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts' um, TV, I mean, YouTube um, video today about teaching young children. Okay? Teaching young children. All right, love you guys. This is a video response. Love you guys. Bye.